All right, Bang, today is Monday, November 30th. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. We got another snake draft for you, and our guest for today is Rear Admiral out in Boston. Rear, happy to have you, man. What's up, fellas? Uh, my condolences on the loss last night, but hopefully we can get the energy up a little. I know it's Monday morning, a little earlier for you guys, but I want to see a little more pep in the step. I think we're all, listen, this is something that we got to get ready for. These are actually good for us on a Bears Monday because as much as uh, we were sad and depressed on our post-game red line radio yesterday, like we know we got to become ready to play today because you just, it's its a new day. And I think the other three would say the same thing. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, Monday morning sucked anyways, especially when you're an hour fucking earlier and then a loss like that. But I know you guys, you'll recover. You guys will be good. And the other thing. Rear, not to like turn you off to this. I know you're, you know, snake draft. Uh, you don't do all of these with us. There's not a lot of chit chat, man, beforehand. Before we got started, Rear Ads thought we'd be in here busting balls and hate like we're this is a competition at the end of the day, Rear Ads. I don't want you to lose sight of that. Okay. I it was it was a pre record trip, that's all. But okay, I'm good. All right, I got my helmet on. Let's do it. You got your helmet on and you got the hockey hair flowing out the back. I didn't know you had that in you. It's looking <laughs> quite nice yeah until i take my hat off but thank you i appreciate it well keep it on and it looks great (laughs) yeah yeah that's well therein lies the rub you know yeah well all right like i said i've been waiting to have you on because i think this category is perfect for you the category is things i wish i attended so it could be from any time there's five subcategories we have u.s history we have world history we have sports we have concerts and then we have a miscellaneous. This topic was inspired, actually, from Big John the Mailman. He gave us his way back in probably like the summer. And I was like, this is a great one. We just got to figure out the right time to do it. Had to get through the holidays. And rare, you're the history book. I, don't, I, I feel like this is going to be a chief and you show here where it's just going to be chopping it up about random shit. So this is going to be good for you. I'm nervous. Lots of possibilities. I feel like as, I, I'm like known as kind of a history guy. I'm going to be all over the place. Like it's it's. I feel like I'm ready to finish maybe off the graphic because I'm just going to have weird picks. Yeah, so uh, the draft order is decided. We can get it going. Uh, Carl has number one overall. I have the second overall pick. Chief is third. White Sox Dave's fourth. Rear Admiral is fifth. Um, like I said, Rear Ads, you could take them in any order. So, Carl, you're on the clock, man. You could uh, step up to the plate. So I thought going to this draft, the best pick to have is the fifth pick because you can see the bo- you can see the board develop in front of you. And the reason I say that is this inventory is so huge here. We can go anywhere. There's like literally, Chief, you said it, there's billions of options here. I mean, there's nothing you can't take here. That said, I do think there's a clear number one in these categories. That category is sports. And I think the clear number one for everyone here is 1980, Miracle on Ice, United States versus the Russians. Now, I know, Chief, we gave you Miracle when we did movies, and I respected that when I took Mighty Ducks 2 first overall, so I don't want to get bitched at about this. But I think when you look at the board, you say, if I could be at one place historically, sports for me, sports for any red-blooded American, should be 1980, Lake Placid, the fucking boys taking down the Russians. That's exactly why I was pissed off a little bit at Ed for taking – uh, like skipping me in the draft order when we were picking the draft because that is the only one one overall pick in the draft, even though it's such a wide open board. Because thank we you, Dave. No passed on it. Uh, I think Chief or whoever went third, and I was up next. I thought, and I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna get the Miracle on Ice team because that's the only pick for that for that slot, the only one. Now, now the real question is, Eddie's picking next. Will he take like the night? Will Red Ed take the 1976? Uh, USSR gold medal like that's something that's something that we we, we will see here Maybe that's that I want to know why you're not mad at Carl right now chief because that is a one one I was Carl's familiar with it everybody's familiar with the actual event I was mad at you for taking miracle because you finished watching it on your little eight inch computer as we went <laughs> before the draft it was a disingenuous pick there's a big difference between what Carl just did and what you did when we were doing sports movie draft that was really I don't know though I think it means more to you and it, does, it probably and does fuck mean, you. It probably yeah. does mean more to me and more to to rear ad, but it's not the same as what you did on the movie draft. That was bullshit. Carl is free to take uh, that that moment because it it is the one one pick in this draft. Everything else is an open board that had to go first overall. In classic Ed, just trying to twist the knife and play games here and get other people against each other here, Ed. 
you have the second overall pick. Historically speaking, the second overall pick, you see Richie Weber's graphics. I think it's won one time. Ed, you had the whole board here. You took the second pick. Very interesting strategy. I did. I took the second pick, and I, I did that. I did that for a reason. I, I, I listen. Miracle on Ice is a great pick. It's a great. I'm curious, Rear. Did you have that number one? For your I sports? did. I did, and I knew when I passed that the the number one pick up. By the way, you should have mentioned that uh, when I passed up the number one pick. I knew. I knew Miracle wasn't going to make it to the fifth pick, but I was willing to sacrifice that to for better picks overall. Okay. Strategic. You're well, right. I think it's crazy because I think people are going to see that, and I think that that automatically gives you like just that much more firepower for when the graphic is unleashed on the world. Sure, I, I it's, listen. It's a great pick. I might regret it in the end, but at the end of the day, to me, I think there were other sports moments that I'm okay getting besides it. So that's why I didn't want number one overall. So that's it. Uh, all right, I'll go to number two for me. Um, I, I'm going to take this in the number two spot. You guys might think it's high. I was born in 1990. Okay, this is something that uh, was kind of – I've been very fascinated with the last couple of years since the movie came out. Uh, I'm not the hugest music guy. I've watched this on YouTube a million times. But I'm going to go with the Live Aid uh, from Wembley Stadium with Queen. Yeah. Unfucking believable concert. Raised a shit ton of money for charity. And I – have it as my number one musical concert event on the board. That would have been mine too. I, I had a toss up between mine and who I will pick, but that I mean, you can't you can't argue with that as the first music concert off the off the board at all. So not, not to be a dick, but Live Aid Wembley because there was Live Aid was two shows in one day, yep. Philly Philly and Wembley. So uh, he played at Wembley, right, Freddie? Yep, I, yep, I, okay. I, I I'll take Wembley because Queen, the fucking presence Freddie Mercury had. And uh, it was it, it was electric. It was fucking electric. Watching it in the movie, it was it was very well done. And uh, like I said, it's on YouTube, and I, I'll still come across it like a couple every, once once every couple months, and I'll watch it. And I'm still just fascinated by it. It looked like it fucking rocked. So I, I'm going with Wembley uh, Live Aid at Wembley with Queen. Okay. Uh, I have a question just for clarification. Is this thing that we wish we were attending live or is it before we were born? Because that does kind of like if, if it's before we were born, then that eliminates everything the last for me the last 34 years. So or can it just be we can just go to any sporting event ever? I assume it was anything ever. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. Just wanted yeah. just wanted clarification on that. While we're clarifying things, are we. Uh, we're just going there for the day and coming back. Is it like we're going there to change anything? Like, is there any qualifications for what? Well, what I think, I think, listen, I think you explain it for yourself. Obviously what goes on the graphic is going to say live aid Wembley, you know, mm -hmm. miracle on ice is going to say for, for years, but it's like, you know, your, your perspective is your perspective. Like if you say, Oh, I think miracle on ice would be cool to see, you know, I'd want to sit with the Russia. You know what I mean? Like yeah. however you want to explain it, but and you know, make it more interesting is up to you. But, but you're I not say, you're not going to like take a bullet for Kennedy, right? Like you're no, not going, no, 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 okay, no, no. Yeah, no, there's no thank you, history. Chief. Thank yeah, this ain't you're back to the future. Surely <laughs> experience it. Okay. I okay. took it as you're like a fly in the wall at historical events. Okay, okay, that's a great way to think of it too. Uh, um, yeah, Live Aid Wembley. I think it's a fucking one-one concert. So I'm happy with that at two overall. Uh, Chief, to you. All right, I had a hard time. I mean, I only had one sports moment on the list uh, that I really wanted, but I do think that's the most uh, shallow category here. Um, so congrats to Carl for getting the 1980, the only one I truly, truly wanted. But I am going to go um, – I want to go back to when boxing was king. I mean, and, I, you know, you talk about wanting to see the all-time grades at, at their peak. I want to see the fight of the century. I want to see – Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, Madison Square Garden. Uh, that was 1971. Ali coming back from uh, being banned because, from boxing because he wouldn't go to Vietnam. Uh, unbelievable story. Obviously, Muhammad Ali is the GOAT. You want to see the greatest. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, the fight of the century. Ali Frazier, I believe that was one, uh, 15 rounds, Madison Square Garden. And Frazier won the fight, but that was, to me, like that's like the fight that I would want to go to. I believe Frazier won two of three versus Muhammad Ali. I don't think that's accurate. I think Muhammad Ali won the last two. Two out of three, right? Ali won one, two, yeah, three. Two of three? 
Uh, Ali won two out of the three. I yeah. thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. That's a great pick. I mean, it's a, a fight was a great way to angle this. So Ali Fraser, I mean, that's that's. that's and that's the, the one. That's the one to take. Like that's the fight yeah. to take. Um, and that you know, it, it's people got hyped up for you know Tyson against fucking Roy Jones. Back then, like boxing, you could argue was the number one sport at that time in America. Like it was still like the premier thing. Everybody stopped what they're doing. They packed movie theaters to do live streams because like TV just wasn't as big of a thing still in the 70s. So, uh, yeah, Ollie Frazier won Madison Square Garden. Put me ringside. And listen, I, I know this doesn't matter at all. And so I'm not I'm not comparing either of your picks. But and, and Miracle on Ice, I think I think obviously we all agreed we would choose that over it. But I think if you want the ticket stub, I think. Ali Fraser might be better. I don't know. Like, I think that would be, that's a cool ass ticket stub. That that's a good, that's a good, interesting angle. It's wrong. Like you still want the 1980, but I appreciate you trying to support my argument. 1980 know. is the clear, the clear number one. I feel like it'd be generic Olympic one. It would say like uh maybe home maybe. team nice versus landing. whatever. Nice that's landing. why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you, no, no question. Clarification real quick before we go to White Sox, Dave. Ali versus Fraser one. Is that how you want to put? Because that's, you know, it's pretty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You got to be specific when yeah, you say I would Ali say Frazier. Ali, Ali Fraser one. So not the rumble in the jungle. I okay. want the, the, it's known as the fight of the century. Okay. So Ali versus Fraser one. All right. Mm-hmm. Good pick. Three blacks in place right now. Um, so I thought she was going to go rumble in the jungle, but Ali Fraser one. That's. I, I won't argue that. You can't argue any of the first few picks. Other than Ed's, I thought there were concerts more famous that you could have attended. Whatever. It is what it is. I'm going to go to the history category uh, because I think the rest of mine are kind of obscure. So I needed to get a home run first pick because I think I'll be able to get the rest of my picks later on. I'm going to go to the signing of the Declaration of Independence for the history category. Obviously, birth America, change of fucking world. What more do I need to say? It was a hot day. It was a very hot day. They didn't have air conditioning in Philadelphia. I mean, born as fuck, too. Uh, attendance hall. Uh, it was, I mean, obviously, Philadelphia is in more shut down, but it was kind of cool being in the little courtyard right across the street from our hotel where basically America was born. Yeah, I'm busting, I'm busting your balls. I think it's a slam dunk first round pick. I think it's a slam it's, dunk U.S. history first round pick. I, I picked that for us because I think that we would have gotten shit on if that wasn't on the list in the first round. I, I have just this visualization with Dave <laughs> with his like high socks as a fucking chimney sweep, like in the back of the room where they signed the declaration of it. All over my face. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck? I'm one of the hundred and one I, Dave, would, a, Dave would break it to the newspapers, too. He'd have the scoop on it. He'd be running down to the printing press. you run it. And you know what? Not only that, I'd like to have a cell phone there, like an iPhone. So, like, I'm from the future, but I could, like, you know, s- you know sling scoops in and be the future guy. But no one can see me. Like, I'm kind of – You're a ghost. I can barely see you right now. <laughs> but I, like, I see everything. <laughs> they have no idea I'm there, and I'm just the one, like, sitting there recording all this fucking history. Hey, Rear Ed, do you get, like, mad that Philadelphia gets some of that revolutionary shine as, like, a Boston guy? Do you feel like maybe it's unfair that they didn't sign it in Boston? No, I think it's – I mean, Philly and New York are the – I mean, sorry, Philly and Boston are obviously the two revolutionary war cities. I mean, I think there was a lot more bloodshed and, you know, obviously started here. But, yeah, Philly Philly has as much part of the revolutionary history as Boston. But, I mean, I think Boston got the more a little more the nitty-gritty aspect, you know, blood and guts, I guess, specifically. Dave, do you think you would have been impressed with John Hancock's signature? I mean, you don't have to have been there to be impressed with it. That's like the most famous signature in history. It's, there's, it's a signature is called a John Hancock. Yeah, but you wonder if White Sox Day would have brought that into the forefront, you know? Like he would have been the first guy impressed with it. That's, I, that's, a, I, that's a great first I, first. Penmanship was considered, like, we all write like assholes now. I think penmanship was like a sign of – like your upper class, if you have good penmanship, like with your little quill feather and shit. There you go. Well, that was, I mean, that was a slam dunk to be taken first, uh, first off the board for us history, signing a declaration of independence. All right, rear ad, it's to you. You have two picks here. Okay. My first one is going to be my concert pick. And that's going to be the Monterey pop festival, 1967 sex, drugs, rock and roll for an entire weekend and great weather in California. Awesome music. Drugs are awesome back then. 
Didn't have to worry about birth control, none of that shit. You just get a little shot at the doctor after the weekend. Boom, you're all good. You got Otis Redden, you got the Beach Boys, Simon and Garfunkel, Eric Burden, Lou Rawls, The Who, Jimi Hendrix, Mamas and the Papas, Grateful Dead, all these unreal acts. Again, a weekend in California. It's not just sloppy, rainy, other place I ain't going to mention, give an answer away. Monterey Pop Festival, boom. I know probably you guys weren't going to take it, but that's too big of a deal to leave on the board. Actually, Kyle might have taken it. He's a, he's a student of uh, old school shit like that. It sounds and, great. Okay. It sounds, sounds great. like you know, I've never heard of it, but I'll uh, go ahead and say that that sounds like a one-one pick. Yeah, go go. Uh, if you got a, a, HBO, actually, if you have uh, HBO Max, it's, it, there's actually a documentary on that you should check it out because it's where it's actually where Hendrix lit the guitar on fire and did all that stuff. That's contrary to popular belief. Uh, next up, I've been haggling on this one because um, I can go with the obvious one and. But I'm gonna I'm gonna see you guys just said it, but I think you butchered it. Rumble in the Jungle is Ali Foreman, and that's what I'm gonna go with. It was one of the biggest fights ever. If you've never seen the documentary When We Were Kings, you should check it out. It's about the whole fight, the lead up to it. Uh basically the whole stadium rooting for Ali versus Foreman, the, the rope of dope, Ali Boumaye, one of the most historic fights in history. Like you said, Chief, boxing was king in the 70s. I was lucky to kind of come of age in the Heavyweight era, then we got the great middleweights that led into Tyson, and then, you know, well, boxing kind of spiraled out a little bit after him. It's made a little bit of a comeback. But yeah, I'm going to go Rumble in the Jungle, Ali Foreman. Um, what was it? Kinshasa, Zaire, 1974. Zaire, yeah. That Ali Bumaye just means Ali, kill him. So you had the whole country just rooting for Ali for blood, looking to like knock George Foreman's head off. So that, yeah, great pick. And that's where you see like all the famous clips of him like beating the drum and like running through like the dirt, dusty dirt streets in Zaire. Like awesome, awesome pick. Have to go with Ali. Now, R.A., I yeah. think you fucked up there by not taking Rumble in the Jungle first for your first pick, even though it doesn't really matter because the graphic will show that it was a second round pick. And no one, I don't really know a lot about Monterey Pop Fest. I don't know anything about it. I think you should have flipped them. People are going to – subconsciously be like what the fuck is that even though they're great picks you, from what you, it looks like you think i give a fuck what the internet thinks if 13 years of possible brother hey, you dave. This. i mean dave, come on who cares dave i was gonna say if there's a guy who's gonna come on here and take five things that nobody's ever heard of it's rear admiral because he just doesn't give a fuck you know what? That's fine because i can't wait to i'm sure you can find youtube videos of the Monterey pop fest and i will watch them on the flight tomorrow or something I can't wait for it. Um, Rumble of the Jungle got to be the best fucking fight slogan ever, right? Oh, awesome. By the way, I forgot. I don't know if I said Otis Redding. I just want to make sure I get yeah. his name out there because he's one of the greatest artists of all time. I'm not sure if I said it my initial. That was the runner. first name you said. All right. Okay. So, all right. Well, good. I'm set. He deserved yeah. to have hair it twice then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Monterey Pop Festival. Uh, Ali versus Foreman Rumble in the Jungle. Solid one, two. Were you happy with that? All right. Is that what you were envisioning when you took the last pick? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I knew I was giving up Miracle on Ice when, when I uh, eschewed the first pick there. But yeah, I don't know if any of you guys were going to take him, but, but I'm certainly happy with him in the grand scheme of cultural history. All right. White Sox, Dave, back to you. So uh, what Chief said it earlier, I think that the sports category was by far the hardest for this one. Um. I have to take this for my next pick because the rest of I like I just I, fuck the sports category for this one. I got to take the 1932 World Series. Babe Ruth, did he call a shot? Did he not call a shot? Is <laughs> at Wrigley Field? I live a <laughs> mile south. I mean, it's a legendary baseball moment, and nobody knows the true story. Like, was he pointing the bat at the pitcher, telling him to fuck himself? Was he pointing it to center field, saying, "I'm hitting this next pitch out"? The Cubs obviously didn't win the World Series. Yankees. Uh, it was right after Murder as well, a few, few years earlier. I would love to just be a fly on the wall and hear that conversation between the pitcher and, and Babe Ruth, what actually happened, because no one will ever, ever know. It's a great pick. It was high on my board for that simple fact. If you're there, you can collaborate a lot, which is fucking huge, I think. And did things I wish I witnessed category. Um that, I, that hold on though. Hold on though. Grail for sports memorabilia. That bat, if they can ever prove that, like, like, because there's been and replicas and shit that have sold for tens and tens of thousands of dollars. If you could find that bat, it would go for millions upon millions of dollars. Here, here's the the problem with this pick though. If he goes back in time, and he finds out. 
that Babe Ruth was just like warming up or stretching out his shoulder, doing something like that. And it was totally innocuous. No, and they Hold know. On, let me finish my point, Dave. Okay. And he just does nothing. And it's like this anticlimactic and it becomes a myth after the fact. Then you're just there and it's like, oh, well, like nothing really fucking happened. And you wasted your historic sports moment on something that, you know, may or may not have happened. So that that would be a that would be a major bust if you're going all the way back in time to experience something and it's nothing that would suck. I disagree. I think it'd be worth it to be a mythbuster. Yeah, the, yeah. the quest for truth is is important to some people, Chief. Yeah, you, yeah. You pride yourself on being truth. You can never be get in trouble for telling the truth. That's like one of your quotes. I'm not right? saying I'm not saying don't no. tell the truth about it, but I'm saying if you go back in time to see that, that's and, fine. And it's a nothing and, moment yeah, that yeah, you're not going to be at least a little bit disappointed. Of course, you there'd be elements of disappointment, but at least Thank you know you. the answer. No one will ever, yeah. ever, ever know the answer to did he call the shot? I mean, the, the, this the, there's been like the Sandlot, like fucking calling a oh, shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> oh, fuck, Dave. Eight years after the fact, and no one will ever, ever, ever know what happened unless we can um, I think Chief was just pointing out that you, you're taking a pick on something that may or may not have happened. That's, that's basically what he's saying. Yeah. But right? yeah. The whole, the whole ambiguity and the whole uh, like aura of not knowing what happened is why I have to be there. Well, that's as a fly on the wall, we'll reporting back to Doc Brown when we get back to, I, to where I, we are here. I, that's how I made up my, my list for everything. Like I want to be a fly on the wall. I think it's, I think oh. it's a good pick, Dave. I really do. I think it's a good pick. I want to know. I certainly, and the, the best part about it, I know we're not doing this, but could you imagine if Dave actually did was able to do this? Like he said, Doc Brown, and he came back and he knew the truth. And White Sox Dave was on news stations all over the place being the yeah. guy who rebuffed the claim <laughs> that he called the shot. Well, I mean, he'd have to be cited by like John Heyman and people like that, which Dave loves. So that would that would be quite the story. Don't forget hey, your right, juicy food. We talked about this a while back. You guys know the telephone game where you like you get a circle of like 20 people and then you whisper something into someone's ear and it gets around and it's completely different by the time it gets back to you. Yeah. Like whatever. So there's documented like people know that there is a conversation between Babe Ruth and whoever is pitching against him. What that conversation is, nobody knows at this point. So what, like you said, like what if he was just stretching, like shaking out his shoulders or something? It wasn't happening. They were drawing back and forth at each other. Whether or not he told him he was going to take this next pitch deep, nobody knows. But that is where I like, as a baseball fan, I have to know what it, what was said in that in that ten second conversation. All right, yeah, I, I picture the Goonie scene where. The cop is on the phone with Chunk. I'm like, yeah, just like you saw this, Chunk. Just like, just like you saw this. So, all right, Dave. So you want 1932 World Series on there, though? Is that what you want? Ruth called shot. Ruth's called shot. All right, that's what I. That's what I figured. I'm just making sure. Um, Chief, back to you. All right, I'm going to go with concert here. I'm going back to Madison Square Garden. You know, uh, Rear Rad kind of like opened up my eyes and made me think about it a little bit differently. I want to see as many great acts and many great artists at one time as possible. I'm just, I'm going all the way back to 2009. I'm going 25th anniversary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You had Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band. You had Billy Joel. You had Aretha Franklin. You had Jerry Lee Lewis was still alive. You had Ozzy Osbourne. You had basically everybody, a who's who of everybody who ever lived at that concert. Dave, Bonnie Raitt was there. Like everybody did a little bit of something. And I'm not a music festival guy. So like the idea of doing RAs thing where I got to be there and like, you know, the mud and tents or wherever they sleep for days on end. No, Dude, I it was want Monterey, a, California. It was gorgeous. I, I want a four hour. It's, you're still outside. I want a four hour concert where I get to see the greatest whoever did it. And then I get to go home at night. Like that's what I want. Um, so I'm going uh, Madison Square Garden to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 25th anniversary concert. I think you get that in the fifth round. You can get that. You can make that argument for every single pick the rest of the, the rest of the way. There's I agree. Only, yeah. I agree. Okay. So. Okay. Love hey, the reasoning. Anything? Yeah. I mean, I didn't have it on my list, but I wish I would have, even though it wouldn't have been my pick. My, my concert pick is going to be so fucking random. I think that I'm not worried about it, but it's near and dear to me. Insane so clown posse. <laughs> Juggle up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gathering up. That's well. You still. Th thanks for spoiling it, Matt. Sorry, Dave. 
Uh, Rear, what do you think about that one? Well, I, I first I thought it was, he he was just talking about a regular induction ceremony, but did all those bands perform at that anniversary, Chief? I honestly don't remember yeah, that. They did, yeah. Okay, and they, yeah, they've that, done like they've done an HBO special about it. Um, yeah, it, it, I've watched it actually on TV before. Yeah, I'm sure I saw it, but I lost yeah. the sands of time at this stage of the game. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, if they they all, if, they all perform, if Mick they Jagger, all played, then Mick that's Jagger, a good pick. Yeah, Mick Jagger performed too. Uh, sure. So you know he came on stage. So it's, it it really was like a big deal, big concert of who's who. Uh, I think I said Billy Joel too. Like it, it's and it's like a lot of my favorites. Like I love Bruce Springsteen. I love Billy Joel. So uh, having those guys on stage, Aretha Franklin, all of that. I think it's 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 something to be seen, and I want to be there. All right. all right, Madison Square Garden, 25th anniversary, rock and roll. Is that what it is? Sorry, rock and roll Hall of Fame, 25th anniversary. Yeah. Okay, that's off the board. It's back to me. All right, I'm gonna go U.S. history. Uh, it's a dark one. We we brought it up a little earlier, but I gotta pick JFK assassination. Oh. If I was on the ground there just to see yeah. what the fuck happened, man. Is there a guy on the, the grassy knoll. Yes, the grassy knoll. Did it come up from the fucking warehouse? The fucking commotion. I mean, it, it's it's a top. It, 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 it's there, and listen, I know it's going to look weird, but for me, I think it's a oh, not weird. I don't well, think it's weird at all. I, I mean, mean, it's I've, filmed. It's a film thing, so people know what happened. His brains, his brains got fucking blown out, and the shot came from the Texas Book Depository. Yeah, the most famous murder ever, arguably. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. There were a lot of people there. Nobody knows really what happened. So just because you went back doesn't mean that you get clarification on it necessarily. I think they know what happened, right? <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald shot. The, the question is, what's the conspiracy or why did he kill him, right? I could be wrong. I just thought that they knew where the shot came from. They knew who pulled the trigger. No, like There I mean, wasn't questions and, about that. Have no, any of you guys ever been to Daily Plaza? I have, yeah. So did, you, did it change your opinion when you went there? Or confirm your opinion you held before you got there? I watched a documentary one time. I think you and I have talked about it, The Smoking Gun, where mm -hmm. a, uh, a Secret Service guy was in the car behind JFK and sped up and he was holding his gun and he like jerked back and accidentally pulled the trigger that was the fatal shot from like, you know, he was like 20 feet behind him. And that was the cover up. And they did like all the ballistics tests. And there's a l enough evidence to suggest that like this was the guy and they covered up for that guy who supposedly did yeah. it by accident. That's right. I, that, yeah. that was, that's the theory that I like the best. Uh, I'm not really into the grassy knoll. I don't think Oswald did it by himself or like all those shots by himself. So, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, it is the most famous murder ever. Ed, you love murder. You're a big murder guy. Um, so that would be, it's not a, it's not a bad pick, but I, I'm just like, if you're just a person on the street or you're on the overpass or something like that, you don't necessarily have clarification on, on what went down because it was chaos. You're just there seeing it, seeing the Zapruder film with your own eyes. But here's, here's like, see, you're thinking about this differently. I'm operating under the assumption that when you are picking something that like you weren't born for, like the Declaration of Independence or, or the JFK, like I'm thinking that where it's in Fort Worth or Dallas or whatever, that I'm there knowing what's about to happen, but you can't change anything. So you were so in on it. Yeah, I was in on it. I was in on the JFK assassination. I'm like, that's how I would have thought about it when, cause it was, uh, it was on my list for U S history, but I'm thinking like, I'm there. I know what's happened. I'm looking around just like for the Babe Ruth called shot. Like I'm listening to what is being said, knowing that almost a hundred years later, nobody knows what was said. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So that's yeah. why I think the JFK assassination is just a slam dunk because nobody knows. Well, I mean, there's conspiracies. You would kind of like look out and try to prove whatever conspiracy you want. Yeah. An hour, an hour after he got killed, Bobby Kennedy said to one of his aides, I, I, I figured they'd get one of us. I thought it would have been me first. So, I mean, fucking, that's, that's, that should sum it up right there. Oh, but also when he gets his head blown off, the whole JFK movie back until the left. I mean, you don't get shot from behind and have your head fucking rock back and you brains blow it all over the street. Unless you, not, unless you have a seizure, unless it causes a seizure yeah, and you go yeah. forward I for mean, a second and then jerk back. The Zapruder film is, it, it's all, all the evidence you need. And I, and I did go to the plaza. I went to the depository and stand in the grass, you know, and it, I never had anything in my life crystallized that much at, in one spot like that. And then you realize behind the grass, you know, it's all train tracks and there's sewer yeah. covers that go down the ladders to like other roadways. And the mm -hmm. e, it would be the easiest getaway in the chaos of all that moment. It's like, 
I mean, if you think Oswald acted alone, then you'd just be willfully ignorant. No disrespect. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. Wow. Well, wow. I, I don't buy the grassy knoll either, though. I don't buy the grassy knoll. Agree to disagree. All right. We're sending it like back there to See, find look out. At, I love the chaos. You guys are fucking going back and forth. If I'm on the ground, I have an interesting perspective that nobody else has. They're just watching a film. I don't care that I've seen it a million times. If I'm on the ground, I'm telling you, hey, See. here's what I all was. Though there was a fucking horse in front of those sewers, all right? You know what I mean? That's that that that's why it's a good pick. That's a good way oh, to I'm get yourself. Knock, I'm not that's pick, a, knocking the pick. I'm just getting into the JFK it, bullshit. It is a good way to get yourself murdered for knowing too much, Ed. Something to think about. All right. I'd be yeah. fucking all over the place. Yeah, read up fucking. on the witnesses after the witness list. See how many of them ended up died under fucking car crashes and whatnot mm-hmm. after. True. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Dead Ed. <laughs> Um, yeah, so JFK assassination is my pick. Uh, Carl, to you. Did someone call the JFK assassination the most famous murder of all time? I, I just said it was arguably the most famous murder of all ever, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going with world history here, and I'm going to take the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm going to take that weekend. Uh, Ooh, we're doing fictional stuff now, huh? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, Everybody take- knows that there's <laughs> On, no dispute. In Christmas that- season, no less. Yeah. All right. Hey, I, hey, I was born Irish Catholic. I could say whatever the fuck I want about that stuff. So yeah, I know I you're jaded it. by the church. I understand that. But yeah, there's you ever certainly- see spotlight? <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. There's no dispute <laughs> about whether or not Jesus Christ lived. Uh, you know whether or not his movement, everything. There's literally no factual historical dispute to any of that i want to put myself on the ground floor there i'd argue that's probably the biggest moment in the history of the world the pain yeah i mean it's big it's fucking big everything gets shaped from there every decision how many wars have been waged on the backs of fat man's death and resurrection it's just like the amount of just chaos and consequences and implications that have been brought on by jesus christ yeah, it's interesting. So you went, so you're going Sunday, right? Obviously, to see how he he came back, because uh, yeah. Friday's too much. Yeah, Friday's heavy, man. Like I can use my imagination for Friday. Mel Gibson did that movie in 2006. That was pretty fucking heavy. 2005. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take the Sunday. And I don't want to hear it from people that are like, do it like, all right, you got your joke in. You know, that's good. There's our joke. But like, spare me, guys. I don't. I think I might want a veto. Why? Oh, I mean, it's debate whether it happened or not. But well, that's what you want to find out. It's debate whether Babe Ruth called a shot or not. And and maybe for the uh, our audience who might not be familiar with it, maybe Kyle can explain the resurrection because not everybody out there is raised Catholic. So it might be a good idea to tell the audience exactly what he's referring to. This is a big Catholic podcast, though. Story goes, he was crucified and died on the Friday, rose, and then on Sunday. When the guards opened up the tomb, uh, you know, his body wasn't found and they put the body in the tomb and they stood outside for, you know, three days. So there wasn't like any like where could he have gone? So he that's con- it. Yeah, some send it kiddo in shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. OK, there's my moment. Right. I mean, I, I know like, it's I, like I know it. it's heavy. I don't we don't we try to avoid as much religious stuff. But I mean, like everybody knows who Jesus is, whether you yep. believe in him or not or whatever. But like everybody knows who Jesus is. So yeah, you I like the collaborating of picks. You you one up to the most famous murder with the actual most famous murder. Yeah, I think that's yeah. pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty accurate. Yeah, I would say. All right, I like it. <laughs> All right, yeah. So do I. It's resurrection of Jesus Christ. Third round. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to the NASA control center when we put the man on the moon. Miscellaneous. Ooh, good one. Um, and I think now we can start to shift in like the fun part of my list. And what I think you want to get for me out of these events is we know we can't go back and change it, but I want to go back and feel the spirit and the victory, the fun, the accomplishment. There's nothing better than when like a room of people are like all together going nuts in the same level, just like we would have had in miracle 1980. You would have been going fucking nuts when you were there in that moment. If you're in the control room, when you finally get the man on the moon, that has to be the most rewarding thing for all those people that spent like their entire lives and career just doing the calculations and trying to fucking make it work. Now, rare ads, I'm going to sure you're going to tell me like, well, you didn't actually land on the moon, but you know, no, I'm not one of those assholes. Uh, I know Kennedy was a conspiracy. I'm if you on, I'm if you on resurrections, but no, I'm I'm fully down with you there that the man on the moon happened, Kyle. We're in full agreement there. And you said that's miscellaneous, or is that U.S.? How will we categorize that? 
it's going to be my miscellaneous because I, I, it is, it is a United States based thing, but I interpret United States history slightly differently than this in the landscape of us history. So like, I would feel more comfortable making it my miscellaneous. Um, I would also, I know, sorry, yeah, but so, I would say no, that's but, a global human moment. Like yeah. I think that was equally celebrated in China or close to it as it was here, Japan, Africa. Like that was like a global moment, not just us. That would be my opinion. That would be my argument. So I'm with you, Carl. Good pick. Yeah, man on the moon. And that was well, that was one that we were just waiting to get drafted to, right? Like that was that was a lock to go in this draft. So absolutely. Um, all right. So back to me, Carl. Carl goes man on the moon. Uh, with my third pick, I'd like to pause for a second. You oh, fucking oh, asshole! My you are talk the about worst. JP Grazian. You are the worst. Boys, we have our biggest sale for the holidays. A dog walk exclusive. 25% off, White Sox, Dave. 25% off? Get the fuck out of here. 25% off. Only on this podcast. It's not going to be posted anywhere else. Use the code Eddie, E-D-D-I-E. Go to tastereelchicago.com. You have until Friday, December 4th until midnight to get your orders in. The orders will be shipped the week of December 7th, and they'll have they'll arrive plenty of time before Christmas, so you have all your jardinera and muffalata ready to go. It's a big deal, Carl. It's a nice special. I'm doing the math in my head, and Jim's going to be out here hustling hustling the jar, the muffalata, literally $5 a jar. $5 a jar for that stuff when you do 25% off. I don't know how Jim's staying in business. It's when he does promotions like this, I feel bad for him because I'm like, dude, I we can't. I don't want you to go bankrupt, Jim. You know, it's tough. But he says in the text, he says he wanted to say thank you to all the listeners and fans of Barcelona Chicago that helped JP Graziano so much this year in the pandemic. So it's a giving back, big Christmas guy. So go do that. Support JP Graziano's. He's giving away one hell of a deal. Like I said, promo code Eddie E D D I E at TasteRealChicago dot com. I mean, you're not going to get a better deal than that if you. If you love the peppers, if you love JP, get your order now because it's a fucking hell of a deal. Yeah, um, last thing that I just want to say real quick when we talk about supporting small businesses around Christmas time too, like Jim has gone above and beyond for the guys that are on this podcast. Jim's gone above and beyond for us. It's a great time to support Jim right back. Sorry, I know it's your ad read. I nope. just had to say that. It's 100% right. So that's great. Go support JP's. All right, so it's to me. I'm going to go with my miscellaneous. My miscellaneous is not um, – I, I mean, it's a historical period, but – at the same time, it's not. there's not one specific moment. So it's a little outside the box, I guess. I just want to go. I want to attend. Things I want to attend. I want to attend a speakeasy during the Prohibition. Ooh, that's good. Do you I have one in there. mind? Like, do you have, like, an Al Capone one or something? Yes, yeah, so obviously. We're in Chicago. You know, I'm fucking, you hear the stories. You know, that's how I believe the jazz scene got fucking beefed up big time from uh the prohibition uh i mean i don't know it just being sneaky uh going back to where everything's illegal i mean i'd still i mean it's a fucking pandemic obviously be safe whatever you gotta do but there's i'm sure there's speakeasies going on now but i take me to a speakeasy during the prohibition is that an event though yeah well, what why wouldn't it be it's not like an event Drinking at a speakeasy? Are you the same guy I just picked? What's something that might not have happened? <laughs> now you're going to call out Ed? <laughs> something that did? <laughs> what did I? No. I, I mean, now that did happen. Well, Babe Ruth? Yeah. The called shot? The called shot, the ambiguity of what happened in that game, the 1932 World Series, is why I have to be there. But – like, I, I, you can take it, I guess. I don't think it's like an event, though. Like, the moon landing was an event. Like, a, going to a speakeasy, that, that was just like... Well, he something. said things you wish you attended. That was the the text I got. I mean... I got one. How about Eddie sitting in a Prohibition speakeasy for the 1932 World Series, Dave? There you go. <laughs> and listen to it on a fucking radio. <laughs> That would that be nice? I could hear what they said about the uh, the shot call. I don't know. Does anyone else got a problem with it? I think. I mean, prohibition's a fucking very fucking big time. So I 
No. It, I like it so much I'm willing to work with the veto to get it onto the graphic. Like I have you have bipartisan support here. Like I, so if you don't feel it's specific enough, I'm fine sitting here and workshopping this until we get something that lands on the graphic and has our support. Because yeah. I like prohibition that much. So so car or RA said that uh it like the Texas things you wish you attended. Like I'm thinking sporting event, world history event, US history event, miscellaneous event, concert, like musical event. Going to a speakeasy is not an event. That's well, just- again, it, the, the, the word event, it said things you wish you attended. That, I'm just saying that's the text I got. So, like, it, by those words, yeah, I wish I attended a, a prohibition uh, era speakeasy. Like, it seems pretty cut and dry to me. I know it's not a quote-unquote event, but, I mean, if I wrote that down and based on the info I was given, I, I you know, I got to go to bat here for Ed because it wasn't, the word event wasn't given to me. So, you know I what? Just as easily have. I won't veto. I actually, I would, I would love to go to a speakeasy with you, Ed. I just don't know that it fits for the specific draft is what I'm saying. I think it'd be a fucking blast. Like I've always said, I want to go to an underground casino in Chinatown because I've heard those exist. Like that's something I want to do. Like it's, it's. Like, Anything underground I'm in for. That, that's that, the point here. Underground I'm in for. Prohibition was a big time. No one could fucking drink. So that's why I'm like, hey. Take me there. That's a fucking event. Chief, you got any problem with it? When, when you started the explanation, I was like getting my, my finger was on the veto button. And then you said what it was. And I loved the pick. So uh, I'm not, I have no problem with it. I think it's, a I'm not pick. it's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, like that would have been, that would have been sweet. That would have been a lot of fun. Like if it, this so far is probably the most fun pick uh, yes. on the on the draft like just drinking when you're not supposed to it's almost like permanent high school status right like you're out you're having fun you're not you're doing something that is so super common but also not allowed so you're kind of a bad boy i think that's i think that's great that adds exactly. it t- turns it up a notch so gr- i think it's a great pick all right that's my miscellaneous speak easy during the prohibition uh chief we're back to you i believe all right i'm gonna go world history here as well and it's kind of uh i was plan on taking this in the fifth round but for the sake of the draft it's going to piggyback on uh on carl's pick of the resurrection of jesus christ i'm taking the council of nicaea because that's when all the people in the roman empire 324 years after jesus died decided what was going to be in the bible so they just there was all these different groups of christians and they were all like hey like we're all like warring we need like one fucking book to decide like was jesus the son of god or was he just a regular guy was he this? Was he that? And then they kind of came together and had this like grand meeting to decide like, all right, this is what Christians believe. And that is what started all the wars. So Carl being like, it was, it was Jesus dying. We didn't even know. They, they, they were just high. It was like a highly edited, highly um, editorialized story and book. And those people got together and decided like the path of the world. And it became the greatest selling book, most well, well-read book of all time. Uh, so I want to be there when they were like arguing about like what Jesus was really like, like that. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Like what didn't make the cut? Yeah. There, and there's <laughs> books, there's books about like the book of Enoch, the like Mary Magdalene had a book. They're like, she's a woman, get her out of here. And like, so there are all these other like parts of, uh, Jesus's disciples that they just, they like black, black line things out of there and like cut whole books out of there that were part of early Christianity that 300 years later, imagine like if we went back to the constitution, we're like, we're going to get rid of some of these bill of rights. We're just going to get rid of them. And like, but that is how they made the actual new Testament. Uh, and that was well after Jesus died. And that's like the actual real, the real thing that uh, moved the world like forward in different directions. Great explanation. I, I, I mean, I don't, you know, it's going to be tough for people to know what the fuck it is. I know, I know, yeah, but kind of like know. taking a kicker in the second round here, but whatever. Hey, if it well, works it, for you. Yeah, it, it does work for me. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to piggyback because we just talked about the other Jesus stuff with Carl. So I thought this would be the, the right spot to take it, even though I, I know it could have gone the fifth round or the 20th round or whatever. But that to me is like the most interesting moment. Um, for like Western civilization is like that moment right there where they decided what was going to be in, uh, the, uh, in the Bible. A lot of people have fucking read that book. Yeah. Big, big time book. So, yeah, so. and they haven't yeah. read the things that got cut out. Like maybe I think had it, a wife. Yeah. It's a great, I think it's a great pick. Like I said, it's the listener, the listener, the listener is going to really drive that vote for you. If they're going to, yeah. you know, well, 
And I, and I said before the draft being like, I know this is probably, this draft is not going to go well for me because I'm going to have some random fucking things. Council and Nicaea was what was in my brain when like, I know it's not a well-known thing. Even Donnie, when we did that history pod ad on dog walk was like not super familiar with it, which surprised me. So if Donnie doesn't know it. I'm sure a lot of people don't know it, but council and Nicaea were, which decided the fate of Christianity for 2000 years, essentially. Good pick. Uh, White Sox, Dave, you're up. Now, I could go a scratch right here, and I almost want to, but I'm not going to pander. I could go with Woodstock. I feel like people are going to bitch at us because I'm going to take another concert, and Woodstock will officially be left off the board completely. Woodstock, to me, does not sound like a good time. A million people attended. It was in the middle of a fucking field. Mud. Like, if you have a bad seat, how the fuck are you supposed to hear Jimi Hendrix guitar solo and shit like that. Like, as good as the musicians were there, I just wouldn't have wanted to be there. Instead, I'm going to go to 1990. I'm going to go to Alpine Valley. I'm going to go to August 27th. I'm going to go to Stevie Ray Vaughan's last concert. Died in a helicopter crash about uh, 1 a.m. that morning. Nobody even know, knew that the helicopter crashed until the uh, next day when it didn't. He was on his way to Chicago. He was with Eric Clapton, and it was supposed to be Eric Clapton that took that last seat on the helicopter, but Stevie Ray Vaughan was in a hurry to get back to Chicago because he had to start prepping for a show uh, Well, in Chicago the next, the next morning right away. So Eric Clapton's like, no, you go. We'll catch the next one. Fucking crash Stevie Ray Vaughan dead. I think he, in my opinion, and he's the greatest guitarist of all time, I absolutely love his music, and – if I could have been at Alpine Valley, which we've all been to, other than RA probably, I like to see him in his last show. I think would have been absolutely incredible. I like that for a deep cut, uh, White Sox Dave. I like you say a lot of people might not have picked it, but yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan's one of those guys that you know a lot of people probably aren't even aware of him. But when you discover him, it's like man, what a what a fucking talent this guy was. Then to lose him so talent. soon was awful. Yeah, and uh, it was it was just all of a sudden he's fucking dead. Like if if you he could still be playing fucking rock shows today, you know, if it weren't for just bad weather. It was not too dissimilar to what happened to Kobe Bryant, just bad weather, foggy, a crash a half mile from takeoff, and just really sad, fucking one of the best ever, gone at the drop of a hat. So Stevie Ray Vaughan's last Oof. concert. Yep. Good, good, right. good well, pick. Right. I'm a little disappointed you didn't take uh, Garth Brooks in Central Park, but. Uh, I was thinking Garth Brooks at uh, yeah. uh, Joe's on a Wheat, but mm. I was there. Yeah, so, there you go. I can say I went to that. Mm. Only about 100 people there, no big deal. Right. <laughs> um, for the record, uh, Dave, you went very into Woodstock. Carl still has his concert pick on the table, so that was uh, not factual when he said everybody's off the board. So uh, yeah, He can have it if he wants. Yeah. I mean, like, I could have taken a scratch. I didn't want to because I'm not a pander like Chief is. And, Carl, <laughs> and you. I don't pander. <laughs> Fuck you, Dave. All right, I think yeah, I think clearly Chief didn't pander with his last pick, Dave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, for real. Dream of Knockdale, whatever the fuck I, that yeah, was. I appreciated his last pick because I kind of learned something. I didn't yeah. know what the fuck that was. You're welcome. Um, all right, so Steve Ray Vaughan's last concert is off the board. Uh, we'll move it back to RA. All right, um, I'm gonna go U.S. history, and I'm I did have this written down before, so it might be looking like I'm piggybacking off you a little bit, but I'm gonna go with the repeal of prohibition, which speakeasies were fun, but Take a speakeasy outside and have everybody doing it. That's basically the repeal of prohibition. The whole country was fucked up. For, I would imagine a long time. It was probably a huge party everywhere. I mean, people probably smelled worse back then, and their breath was probably awful given the hygiene products available. But fuck it. Roll the dice. Re prohibition repeal. Big old party in the Grand USA. Sounds good to me. It's just a real knife in the back to Ed here. I mean, it, it, Ed puts prohibition on the graphic. Ed takes prohibition, talks about prohibition. And uh, it's almost like Rear Edge changed his draft strategy once he heard I'd say prohibition. Except I'm not that I wrote it down five hours ago, but other than that. See. <laughs> Kyle We're hates when you give notes. it back to him. <laughs> We're going to need those notes for the dog, the dog walk yeah. uh, you know, committee. We're going to put it in the hall. I, I actually don't think that pick hurts you at all, Ed. I think I'd still rather do the illegal version because it's going to be more fun. You feel like a bad boy. It's like R.A. picked the – like. They, they turn the lights back on. Yeah, but you don't want to split vote. the prohibition vote. You never want to split the prohibition <laughs> vote. Could be deadly. <laughs> Could be deadly. 
All right. Uh, and then the second one, this one, I, I don't know how I get a word, but I, I can get specific. I need to. I'm going to use a phrase because it's all common to us. But world history, when dinosaurs ruled the earth, obviously that's from Jurassic Park. If it needs to be more specific, we'll say, all right, we'll hang out, hang out a couple months before the asteroid hit and knock them all out. But basically, uh, be on the planet to observe, di observe dinosaurs while they were run, running game back in the day. Fly on the uh, wall. I think that's a pick of the draft. What a fucking incredible pick. Wow. Uh, fuck that. Have you seen dinosaurs? Those things are so fucking scary. I don't want any part. I don't want to be anywhere near a dinosaur. But I'm a fly on the wall, man. I mean, hopefully yeah, some exactly. pterodactyl won't get me with his tongue, but... I mean, the dinosaurs predated human beings by like 65 million years, so... So, it's you, still the world. I know, so I just... Just to be clear, that's... It, when we say world history, it's like clear world history. It's not human history within the world. I like the pick. I like it. It's a good interpretation. Carl, I'll give you this one for free. If you want to go back to the Big Bang, you can take it. I like that. I just I, – we'll but go back to Big Bang. That would just through. It's a great pick. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Me? Yeah. Right, you, Dave. All right, no, I don't know if you're talking back to Dave. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, the, the whole dinosaur craze happened when I was already of drinking age, so I didn't – you know, I didn't have, like, dinosaur toys and shit as a kid, but – I mean, a T Rex is such an obvious guess. I don't know. I mean, I guess the pterodactyl is always pretty cool, flying fucking dinosaur. You know, Fuck little, that. little aerial advantage. Pterodactyl flyer. I don't like that. All right. All. Well, if I say T Rex, I mean, who the fuck? Everyone's gonna say T Rex. You know. Yeah, that's a. And when I was a kid, there were four thing. fucking dinosaurs. Now it's like they find a one bone and like, oh, this dinosaur like to drink wine on Wednesdays and watch fucking Sex in the City on the weekends. It's like they figure out all this weird shit from a fucking million year old bone. Triceratops. Uh, all right, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, he'd make a good lineman at Triceratops. Yeah, I mean, listen. Yeah, he would. Now, you, uh, Dave, that's not revolution. It was on my board, too. You act like that was like a revolutionary one. Like, I think everyone, like, had dinosaurs. And even if it is the fly in the wall, a fucking dinosaur is going to eat that fucking fly. I'll roll those dice. Yeah, roll the I don't know how to put it on, though. I'll be honest. What, di dinosaur, uh, the dinosaur meteor? What, what do I put here? I mean, Jurassic era, I don't know, a month before dinosaur, uh, asteroid yeah. wipes out dinosaurs. That's hang, out with, hang out with dinosaurs. <laughs> month before, yeah, I'll, I'll think of something. But yeah, Jurassic I, era probably works because then people the make that connection. This draft is like RA and I think are on the same page. We're operating as if we're flies on the wall. If yeah, this ain't. If dinosaurs ain't. ate you, RA, it's like the butterfly effect. The entire world would be different right now. Yeah, this ain't like Cro Magnon, fucking yeah, or Neanderthal shit. It's just world history. Anything that happened in the world during his history. <laughs> um, all right, uh, White Sox Day, back to you. Um, okay, so I I was hoping this would get to me. I'm kind of surprised it did. I want to be in the back of the Ford Bronco during the OJ Simpson. <laughs> it was on my board too. That was I want to. That was my miscellaneous. Here. You know who it is. It's AC. Goddamn it! <laughs> I want to hear the conversation. They're on a cell phone, right? That's like one of my earliest memories too, because I was in kindergarten when it happened, and that's like I don't remember the tearing down of the Berlin Wall or anything like that. I re I remember the like how big of a deal it was when he got acquitted in court. Uh, I remember the Bronco chase. I remember it was just everybody and their mother was talking about it, and uh, I would have been. That was in 93, correct? So I would have been five years old. I think it was in 93. No, the, o the OJ chase was uh, 94. Nine, okay, 94. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. June 6th, June 17th, 1994. Yeah, that, and that day was like a fucking crazy day in sports history. That That's right. So I would have been six years old. And, um, yeah, I just think it would have been cool to be in the pack of that Bronco, like hearing OJ freaking the fuck out, uh, whoever the driver was. Like, it, it was – Al like, Collins. Everybody remembers the OJ chase. Who's thirty? Picture. Would you want to be in the back seat with OJ or in the way way back of the Bronco? Like I, I'm I know. The way way back, <laughs> like with the flat part, like trunk thing. That's where I want to be. Yes, yeah, Dave. You would be in the front, like just picking music. Like you'd be running, like oh, like what? What are we even doing here? You would just be running the radio. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Picture in White Sox, Dave's melon in that <laughs> iconic shot <laughs> with all the cop cars behind it, and OJ is unbelievable. So I want that on the graphic. I want to be in the car, in the Bronco for O.J. Simpson Chase. Yeah, O.J.'s Bronco. I, I, it was on my list, too. It sounds like a lot of us had that one. That was, mm -hmm. It's iconic. So That's I missed, a good pick. I actually missed the O.J. Chase. I was at really? a, I, yeah, I was at a meatloaf concert back in, <laughs> back in. I took my little sister to a meatloaf concert. She wanted to go, and so I took her to, uh, to a concert.
So they had no clue about it. There was no internet. Cell phones weren't really prevalent. I got home, put the TV on. I was like, holy shit. You know, it's like, you know, it was like poof, punch me in the face because it was all over every channel. But yeah, I, I was clueless for hours about it until I got home. Say what you will about OJ Simpson, but he's the only running back in NFL history to rush 2,000 yards in a 14 game NFL season. Okay, and that's you said it, Dave. Be most known that's, for. that's what we should remember him for. That and the naked gun, right, Dave? <laughs> Thank you, Dave. All right, back to Chief. <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner, too. I mean, guy, just you want to just go through all his accomplishments? He's one of the greatest fucking running backs in history. No. And I love his Twitter videos. That guy tells it like it is. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm moving right along. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm struggling with U.S. history here a little bit. Um, right. That's surprising. Yeah, I, I. Well, this is another one where I like I, I I'm gonna make this pick and I'm gonna feel good about it, but I know I'm gonna be left off the graphic. So I'm going with Lewis and Clark. I want to be on that expedition. I want to see America, Louisiana, purchase for the first time. Like just see how America looked before we just paved over it. Like, and I want to be on. Like I love learning new stuff. I want to be on the frontier with those guys as they're like charting things out and mapping it. And it's just a couple of like a camping trip with the boys all across America. Like, you know, have whiskey at night, have a good time, meet some Indians. I think that sounds like a, uh, like a, like a decent time. And, and you're seeing like how like nature was back then. So I Would like it. The Buffalo, all of that. What's that? Would you make love to Sacagawea? I think. Yeah. I mean, probably she looks hot on those, on those dollars. So maybe if she was, if she was willing, horny yeah. Pretty yeah. Horny. Well, a little horny. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you're out, if you're walking around the the plains for three months and Sacagawea gives you the eyes, yeah, I think you're probably inviting her back to your tent. Well, yeah. Dave using make love is a euphemism, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to rearranging her guts like he usually how, likes to say. <laughs> Come on, how many people you know make love? I actually think it's a cool one, Chief. Like I like you said, it's 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 probably not gonna play too great, but you're right. Like it would be interesting to see everything before it became a thing. Yeah. Like imagine being on like Michigan Avenue and it's just nothing like that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool to see like how, was, yesterday, how when I was flying into New York city, like, cause that was just all Delta, like, like kind of like swampland basically. You can, even though it's concrete jungle here, you can kind of see that from the plane when you're flying in, you're like, how the fuck did this become one of the most important cities, biggest cities in the world, you know? And it, like on this fucking big ass, empty plot of land and yep. it, so i like that pick i don't oh. think it's a sexy pick but it's a fucking good pick i'm yeah. sure it was empty but yeah. all right it's <laughs> to me um i'm gonna go world event here i listen it's not it's it's pretty obvious some people might not like it because it's so obvious but i still want to know how they made those fucking pyramids yeah I, I still want to know, like, how do they do it? How was it done? Right. Well, so, aliens, aliens. <laughs> you think that's it? <laughs> it could be, could be. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I mean, if you want to go back in time and confirm that aliens made the first great pyramid, I'm fucking with you on that one. I, that ah. was my miscellaneous, to be honest. So that was on my miscellaneous list. Was pyramid. it? Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's any comments on that. I know it's it's hot weather, Ed. It's just real hot. As you're saying, a lot of sand. You know, very so from hot. A climate perspective. Would you wear sandals? Hold on, though. Hold Carl, on, though. I don't gotta stay long. I just gotta see one dropping of the block. You know, walk around, see how the fucking boys had the, uh, you know, the, the 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 what's the line called? Assembly line. Assembly line. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. See how the boys got the assembly line working. And uh, I'd be happy with it. I wouldn't need. I, I wouldn't need much. I would just want to see. You, uh, start helping, Ed. What? What if they ask you to start helping? I think I. I would be done with my visit. I think yeah, I. I don't think they. I don't think they were asking people to help for that one. Okay, one. <laughs> hey, I, speaking of it being hot, though, this is a fact about the pyramids. I blogged this uh, in September. It the pyramids have air conditioning inside the pyramid. Doesn't matter what the temperature is outside. Somehow, it's always sixty-eight degrees. Always. It's just, per, it's permanently set to the perfect temperature. I don't know how it works, but that's what the temperature is. So, if, Ed, if you're getting hot in the Egyptian desert, you just walk inside. You got AC at 68 degrees, so you're good. Yeah. Beautiful. 
so yeah, building of the pyramids. How the fuck did it happen? Like I said, it's a, it's a great wonder. I just want to know. Um, so that's my fourth pick. We'll move it to Carl for his fourth and fifth. Um, I'm going to go to U.S. history here. I'm going to take the British the British uh, capitulation surrender at Yorktown. So um, I just want to be there for the party after we beat the Brits. Like this is the defining moment where it's like, all right, we fucking beat these guys. It's over. We don't know what we're going to become because of this. A lot of shit to figure out. But we said we're going independent. We knew a fucking battle was coming. The Battle of Yorktown was the time the United States were like, that's it, motherfuckers. Get the fuck out of here. We're our own shit. So you want to put British surrender at Yorktown for U.S. history on the graphic, British surrender at Yorktown. That's what I got. It's a good pick. It's not too heavy. I want to be in the officer's quarters. Sipping nice fucking cocktails afterwards, smoking a cigar, putting on the uniform. You know, you know, all those guys were going out and court and fine ladies after this was over. That was a great win. Good celebration. Good celebration. Mm-hmm. Follow, I'm sure. And the strategy, like you said, after it, like what's what's next? Yeah, because the part for me, the excitement that comes from a lot of these events, like in world history, there's a lot of stuff across United States history, like World War II. There's a lot of these like major major moments but to me the major moment with the most optimism that followed was when we beat the brits so i like it um it's not necessarily the first event or battle that i i would have taken but uh i think it's a very solid like you know three win player right there that's what i'm looking for I don't want to blow the draft. I feel confident in my first three rounds. Like, U.S. history, there's a lot of heavy shit in our history. I want to take something early on, something we can all get behind. You know, people like the fact we beat the Brits. There's no doubt about that. Well, Chief, what do you think? You're the history guy. I, I like it. I mean, if you're looking for, for a good time, like, I, I wasn't going to pick any wars because it's just like, fuck, like, you know, if, if you're celebrating, like, there's somebody there with his fucking leg blown off, like, that's kind of a bummer. But winning at Yorktown, being like, hey, like, we just kicked, we just, it, it'd be almost, it's almost akin to the 1980 Olympic team. I was just about to say that, that. That big of an upset, like, nobody beat the British back then. They ruled the world. The, the world never set on the British Empire. And we had these ragtag farmers oh. went out there with pitchforks and, you know, shotguns and shit and took down King George. So I think it's, I think it's a great pick. Um, and you know, set up, uh, you know, a pivotal moment in world history too. So, uh, yeah, good, good pick. I like that, it. That's a good point, chief. Cause obviously I grew up on battle of Bunker Hill happened pretty much where I used to sleep as a kid at night, but it's like, do I really want to see that? Like people just getting slotted, like was not to mention the U S well, the revolutionaries lost that battle. It's like, do you want to watch people get slaughtered? I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, you know, I'd rather go get drunk after the fucking prohibition gets repealed. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Um, all right, Carl, you need a concert. Um, so I have chalk here. I'm, I, I'm in between two. Um, but today's point, I don't know why, why Woodstock wouldn't go on the graphic. I'm not the biggest music guy of this group either. Like when I look at the concerts, it's like, I don't have something that jumps out where I'm like, fuck, that would have been sick if I could have gone to. So I'm going to take Woodstock because Woodstock is the fucking festival that kind of set the stage for all this stuff. Like if you like Lollapalooza, guess what? There was Woodstock. Like if you look all this shit, we're talking about getting together, throwing a big fucking party. Now, whether I'm right or wrong about this either Woodstock to me is like the generic chalk pick. I'm a sucker. If I don't take Woodstock while I say this though, the other one I have, I know we're going to get to honorable mention later, but just cause I'm on this pick concert. The other thing I had in mind was the 1964 taping of the Ed Sullivan show where the Beatles made their first appearance in the United States. That would have been a great performance. Yeah. But for me, I just think there's more to be said from an experience from going to Woodstock as opposed to be, being crammed in the Ed Sullivan theater for, you know, however long that was 15, 20 minutes, like just that overall experience. And even if it does suck, then I get to be the guy that comes back and be like, dude, Woodstock wasn't that great. But as far, far as I'm concerned, Woodstock's the brand name recognition of that concert environment that like it's lost and forgotten. I would have loved to experience it. Yeah. Woodstock had to go somewhere. I mean, it, uh, it's not, it's not disingenuous because I, I mean, I would have gone like I would, I, I wish I attended. You went to say you went though. Like, have you been to Lala Ed? No, it's the fucking worst thing on the planet and multiply that times 10. Yeah. Just so but there's many- a reason it's called like there's a reason Woodstock like that name lives on, Dave. Do you guys remember when they tried to remake it in like 2005? 
I think it was in the nineties, but yeah. I think they tried to remake it like this year or last year and they canceled it. It was just fucking horrible. I think like uh, Madonna was there and she was just all fucked up and it was just bad. But I mean, like I wouldn't have wanted it. I would have gone because it's Woodstock, not because I wanted to go. Yeah. Like you're kind of obliged to go to something like that. I think if you have the opportunity. All right, then Woodstock's off the board. Um, Carl's draft is done. It's To me, it's my final pick. I need sports. I waited till the end because you guys took yours early, so I might as well have waited because uh, I was not at risk of anything being taken. Um, you guys all have good picks. There's a lot of Chicago-specific ones. You guys laid off those, so I'm going to lay off them too. And, uh, and, and, and listen, this one is, is in the same vein as Dave's. Even though we knew it, we know it happened, when we were kids, everyone would talk about, oh, how many points did you score? How many points did you score? Oh, you had 12. You had 14. Did you hear about this guy, Will Chamberlain? He scored 100. There is no video footage anywhere of Will Chamber- Chamberlain's 100-point game. To be in attendance, to actually witness someone scoring 100 points would be pretty fucking cool, even if they were all layups, free throws, or whatever. I know how he got them. I'm very aware, but it's the iconic picture with 100 it's being there when no one else saw it. That's what's important to me. So I think that's a good sports pick, a good final sports pick. I think Wilson it's one 100. of the great. I think it's one of the great value picks in draft history. Maybe in the last, maybe not draft history, but over the last 10, 12 drafts, I think that's one of the great value picks. One of the great fifth round picks. It does nothing for me personally. Well, the fact there's no footage, I think, is the strongest argument. Yeah, I honestly had no idea there was no footage. But that's how little I care about that event because, like I'd say. What was he, seven feet tall? That's all he was going to do is just some fucking turn around, post someone up, and dunk. Like, Kobe's 81 where he's just going off, and he's so in the zone he can't miss. If I'm playing basketball on a fucking four-foot hoop against eight-year-olds, which is basically what Will Chamberlain was doing, I'm just going to turn around and dunk all the time. That takes no skill. Fuck that. Well, I went against Russell. I, yeah, I mean, I'm embellishing. <laughs> to make my point, you know, they, uh, they also, the I'm just being a mass hole. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they stopped the game after he got to a hundred. Cause they're just like, fuck it. Game's over. And uh, so like, that's something to like, to be so dominant that the refs are just like, he got a hundred. We're done with this game. It, that's kind of cool too. But yeah, it, it wasn't on my board as a sports moment. I think there's, there's, and, and, and like Carl said, and it's the truth. It's the no footage thing is what got me. Yep. A uh, hundred. Hundred points is so fucking many, mm-hmm. triple digits. It's 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 a huge moment. And and listen, whether you you know you got older and you become a little jaded, but when you were a kid, you always wow, how the fuck? Who's Will Chamberlain? He scored a hundred points. So uh, I, I'm gonna pick that as, as as the last sports pick. And um, we'll go to uh, Chief. Your your final pick. What do you need? I need a miscellaneous now. Um... So I'm going, I want to be at the crash site, 1947, Roswell, New Mexico. Motherfucker. Let, let me see those aliens. Let me see them aliens Motherfucker. and, uh, and get to the bottom of that. So that spurred, you know, after that came like area 51 and all that, but give me Roswell and let me see those little green dudes. So I can just confirm that aliens are real, even though I already know they're real, but I want to see them. Had a bad pick. It's actually a good pick. I would say it's a great pick. There you go. Great. It was my, it was my last one. My last one I hit you on. Go, go into a little more. Sorry. 1947. Aliens allegedly crash landed at Roswell, New Mexico. There were newspaper articles about all the, like, what the fuck is going on? Government comes in, you know, basically men in black situation. They, they get rid of those papers. They, you know, block off the crash site. Um, and it's been like a big mystery ever since. So I want to be there. When the aliens crash land and they get transported and they set up uh, Area 51 uh, to to store those aliens and like all the Bob Lazar shit, like I want to see the aliens that crash landed here in 1947, Roswell, New Mexico. All right, you took our eyes too, so it must have been a good pick. Yeah, <laughs> good pick, Chief. <laughs> uh, White Sox, Dave, what do you need here? You need world history, right? This is gonna so. <laughs> I have my serious picks and I have my funny picks. And I actually want to kind of merge the two with this one, but I have a feeling that you guys might not like it because it doesn't have like a specific set date or like a time frame. I want to go back to 
and find the fucking asshole who ate the fucking bat that started this bullshit pandemic. And I want to slap him in the face. I don't want to be a fly on the wall. I'll be like, put that fucking bat down. You're about to ruin White Sox Dave's baseball season. You're going to only give him 60 games on the White Sox windows just now opening, you fucking cocksucker. Put the fucking bat down. Dave, Dave doesn't want to be patient zero. He wants to be patient one apparently, because we've already established that you're a fly on the wall. You can't go back and intercede. So you're just meeting the guy who got it first and ate the bat so you can get it second. Like, that's what you're saying. You that's can't what, intervene. Guess what? I already had the coronavirus. It didn't fucking do anything to me. I was a little sore for a couple of days and sweat a little bit. I would have just self-quarantined for 14 days and not spread it to anybody else. Okay, okay. But, but fine. But you're going back. You're like, you just want to meet the guy who started the virus? I want like, to. That, like we already said, like, Ed picked JFK. He can't stop the assassination. You can't stop Corona. You can't. You, your whole your whole logic was I'm going to go back and save baseball and save the world from Corona. You can't. We've already established those rules. So that might be that might hey, be. No, no, no. We never established rules. That's kind of just how we were all operating. No, we. I asked for clarification. I asked for, for sure. clarification that you can't go back for and sure. take a bullet for JFK. I said that like right in the first round. So sure. You can't go back and stop Corona. You just want to watch somebody get it. That is the I'm, worst pick in I'm the asking this draft. Commissioner Ed, because I'm only taking the pick if no. you I, already took it. Fuck no, I did it. Yes, you did. I you said, said I, repeatedly today I, too I, that you that it's fly I, on the wall. That it's fly on the wall. Mouth, I'm talking to Commissioner Ed. But you said it's fly on the wall. That's how I was operating. I'm changing Until now. How I for this. You can't, you can't. We are established. That was a rule. I'm asking Commissioner Ed. I don't want to hear you two talk anymore. Ed. So do you want to show up just to see the guy who started coronavirus? I want to fuck him up. I want to say, put the fucking bat down. Or White Sox, Dave, he looks like Russell from Up right now, the way the cameras with the fucking <laughs> bill of his hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's been driving me crazy for an hour. <laughs> Sorry. Dave, that's yeah. I don't think this can be a I don't think so. Dave. Yeah, okay. you, you like we you said, we can't it. you, you can't he go can back and rewrite it. things. So what do you want to just go someone eat a see them eat a bat and fucking poison the rest of the world that's, and not be able to do anything picked. about it? He picked the start I mean, of coronavirus. He, that's your pick. Yeah, I, I'm a chief here. That was your pick. I mean, you can yeah, only see him do it, you can't prevent it. I said, right. Your finger Otherwise, is Eddie would have prevented piece. Kennedy getting blown off. And none of us would be here right now. It was contingent if I could change the history. All right, so I'll just put it on the graphic, Dave. Break, breaking bat with a starter of coronavirus. Ed, you're not listening to me. I said I want to pick it contingent upon me being telling him to put the fucking bat down that he ate that started this bullshit. Kennedy, duck. Can we veto someone's reasoning for a pick for the first time ever? Like, I think he's, I don't know. I, what do you guys want to do? I don't even like. I mean, is, he's, I he's trying to are, bake in the excuse, but you can't because we're no, can't. we can't re, redo history here. So he either says, I want to see the guy get Corona or I, you can't prevent it, Dave. Just like Eddie couldn't prevent Kennedy yeah. getting killed. Just just put fly in the wall, like your own, your own words, right. fly in the wall. Patient zero coronavirus. That's what that's Dave wants to be. My pick. That's, that's what my you picked. Pick. All right, so you get to you get to see the virus start, but you can't stop it. You he got, wants to know how the bat was cooked. Was it really yeah, in the soup, or was I, it was cooked? cooked? That's not my draft pick. My draft pick was con- that pick right there that I said was contingent on me being able to say, "Hey, asshole, put the fucking bat down. You're about to start a world pandemic." If I can't do that, I'm taking it off my board. If you could right. backpedal this fast in real life, you'd be played in the NFL. <laughs> okay. So that right. it's not my pick. All right, so my pick is what's the, I mean, he can keep it and whatever they can eight, vote on, like, but five, you can't I'm rewrite it. E day, victory in Europe, fucking World War II's ending almost. Uh, he has to still beat the Japanese in the Pacific. I'm <laughs> what day. the fuck are you talking about? Ed, V day graphic. Do this it. is off the rails, man. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> all right. So is this? Yeah, is that U.S. history of miscellaneous? If you're taking the and the he world needs war world. He needs world. World history. Oh, true. It's American too. Um, all right. So, what's your final pick, Dave? So we can V E Day. I want V Day. Like they have the iconic images of them. Like the so, you can kiss. Life. So you can kiss a girl in Times Square. Is that that we want to do? We're, I, like we we've had a bunch of uh, perhaps draft make love to a later towards Madison Square Garden. I want to kiss the chick in Times Square with the sailor hat on and a little red bandana thing around my neck after I beat fucking. Hitler and the and the Nazis and Mussolini and and those dickheads. 
Does that sit well with you, Chief? Is that a good world history pick, VE Day? I, I think it's, you know, his pick was his pick. He wanted to see Corona start. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think his finger was off the piece. Like, I can't even think about VE Day because it's just Dave is, like Carl said, he's backpedaling. He got caught not paying attention to the rule again. And uh, I think the graphic should reflect that. I think the graphic should say the start of coronavirus. Uh, and Dave just has to be. If you want patient. to give that, that's fine because that's another ambiguity that like people were wondering: was it created in a lab? Did it do you to fucking bet? Did it start in Italy? Actually, like the Chinese are trying to say right now. How did this mess happen? How could we have fucking been more proactive about stopping? If you guys want to put it on there, by all means. But that's not that's disingenuous to what I wanted the graphic to say and what I wanted to go back in time and do. All don't lie, Dave. I said it a million times. I don't know what you guys want me to do here. I do think – do you think we should stick him with that, having dinner with the back guy? I mean, I mean that was his, what he said. He, he himself earlier in the show said fly on the wall. So if you're a fly on the wall, you can't, you can't prevent a fucking coronavirus, just like you couldn't prevent Kennedy getting shot. So, I mean, it's kind of a duel. But if, but if someone would have said, hey, like I'm going back in time to stop Kennedy assassination – like I would have been like, oh, okay. But we already established that earlier with, with, with I, Eddie. And you're you the one who established it yourself, it. Dave. You're contradicting your own I fucking would, rule. That's not how I w- was preparing my list of events. Well, I was okay, but, but that's fine. People, but in uh, round on you. one, in round one, I asked for clarification, and we said no. Like you, I'm, the example I used was Kennedy. You can't go back and take a bullet for Kennedy. Like that was, and it was like okay. So that that was in the beginning of the draft. That was before my first pick. And that's how we established it. That's how we were all operating. We went through 24 picks or 23 picks that way. And now you're like, no, I want to stop coronavirus. Well, I mean, we can't do that. Like now I want my, I want a bonus round pick to go back to the start of the draft and redo the whole draft. Because if we're, if we're changing the rules, maybe I would, I would have a completely different draft. So, all right. So are you giving him World War II, Chief, or where do you where do you fall? I think this? Dave should have to be having dinner with the bat guy. <laughs> like All that. right, Dave, it's official. Dave is having dinner with the guy who ate the coronavirus bat. <laughs> here's here's Red Ed. Eight off Ed. This fascist ass put down. This is bullshit. This, Dave, we're at the 24th pick. We're Seriously. at the fucking finish line of this fucking podcast. Rear Admiral's about to give us Mr. Irrelevant, and you want to fucking have dinner with the guy who ate a fucking bat. And that's my fault, of yeah. course. After, and we didn't even give you, I got my shit about the OJ fucking pick, which is outrageous on its own, but. I said outrageous. Oh, you want to ride shotgun with a murderer trying to get away from the cops and think that's fun? I mean, yeah, that's not outrageous at all. You know, yeah. hang out with Tyrannosaurus Rex, you psychopath. I, fly on the I, wall. I, I'm, I'm just a fly on the wall, like you said, I, Dave. I did meet OJ Simpson years ago in the Florida Keys. Ed knows the story. You mean, then a Tyrannosaurus is yeah. gonna fucking. He was like, "What he wants to kill you? He's just gonna eat you." Didn't you see the guy in the? The bathroom in Jurassic Park, the lawyer dude. Right. No, but I saw the fucking <laughs> photos from Bun. Uh, what was it? Brentwood, fucking thirty years ago. I know what OJ was capable of too. All right, so that's it. It seemed majority of the podcast voted for that that Dave should be stuck with the bat coronavirus guy. So, uh, we had my we'll miscellaneous, yeah. miscellaneous. All right, <laughs> I, I want to be there the first time that whoever it was. The first person to get stoned. Uh, I want to see who that was. I want to see how they did it, what made them do it, and how quick they went back to it. Because did they smoke it? Did they cook it somehow? Like the first person to look at a marijuana leaf and or, or a bud rather, and and basically end up getting stoned off it. I want to I want to see that and be there for it. Day if five. you watch a video, I had a crazy reaction because I thought you meant like a stoning. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to see people get killed during this. All right, how, I was, no, stoned I, like you know. Well, I mean, function. I, how it's if it were me maybe you could say like i want to see somebody get stoned it's all right like that was the most on-brand pick of the draft so like i immediately knew what he was talking of course he's talking about drugs i i wonder if that was the first way someone got high though i like well that's stone to stoned i mean that's what i'm saying i don't know if they ate something cooked it however they yeah. did it i want to be there i'm curious yeah. to see the first person whether it was a million years ago five hundred thousand years ago five who the first one to take that bud and be like, all right, let's 
do something with this and, and end up being like 10 minutes later, like, holy fuck, I'm feeling pretty good right now. That's they, that's that's what they I'm say doing. that that was like a huge step in evolution where the humans started like eating mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms, like our like before we were even really humans. And then they started being able to like think in geometry and use spears and things like that. And that like really changed the entire yeah. and like unlocked like the ability to speak and have language and all that kind of stuff. So be very interesting. Makes sense. Yeah. So all right, I'm going to run drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really thought he was talking about someone getting stones thrown at them. Um, all right. So I'm going to run through them. Then we'll do some honorable mentions. We'll get out of here. Uh, Carl miracle on ice resurrection of Jesus Christ, man on the moon, British surrender at Yorktown, Woodstock, Eddie live aid at Wembley, JFK assassination, speak easy during the prohibition, Building of the Pyramids, Wilt's 100-point game, Chief Ali versus Frazier 1, Madison Square Garden, 25th anniversary, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, Council of Nicaea, Lewis and Clark's Expedition, uh, the crash site, uh, where, where I, I got to get that down. What, Ro Mexico? Roswell. Roswell. Roswell crash site. Yep. Yep. White Sox Dave, signing of the Declaration of Independence, Babe Ruth's called shot, Stevie Ray Vaughan's concert, uh, last concert, uh, Passenger in OJ's Bronco Chase. Uh, dinner with the guy who ate coronavirus bat. <laughs> for Admiral, uh, Monterey, Pre Monterey Pop Festival. Ollie for Foreman. Uh, repeal of Prohibition. Uh, the month before dinosaurs died. And uh, the first person who got stoned. What's funny? Yeah, call it, well, Rumble in the Jungle is probably the better way people know it. Yeah. And just not to be a dick, but Kyle said to be in the control room, Man on the Moon, not necessarily Man on the Moon. I think there's a huge difference there in the wording. Yeah, I didn't, I don't, I'm not trying to be like an astronaut with yeah. um, I them. I just think if people see Man on the Moon, that's what they're going to think. Like, oh, Kyle was, like, you know, fly on the wall on, on the shuttle or even on the moon because this is fantasy stuff. But Right, no, I want to be different. the... Control room during moon landing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the guy who fucking did the calculations. I was figuring out the terminal velocity or whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, cal uh, control room during moon landing. Uh, any other honorable mentions? Uh, Atlantis to see if that was a real thing. Uh, the Mayans, like what the fuck happened to them? How'd they make that calendar? How is it so accurate? Like I'd like to like, I, I, I love like the ancient shit. So I, there's like an endless list of that, but. Those are the top two that kind of come to mind for me. Um, uh, if you guys want to go ahead. I had, I, mean, I wasn't going to be territorial. I mean, Bob, you know, Stanley Cup winning goal is obvious, but if the Bruins lose that game, they still got three more chances to win the title. Whereas the rumble in the jungle is a once in a lifetime event. So that's why I kind of went boxing. Plus it's a little more of an open audience. Uh, also concert, Bob Molly live at the Lyceum in, in England back in, I think 76, any concert on the 69 stone story and any Led Zeppelin concert ever, basically. That like Led Zeppelin, that's, it sucks that I've never seen them because they're probably first or second favorite band of all time. I had Pink Floyd playing uh, the wall at the Berlin Wall in 1989. Um, I had Tiger's first Masters when he won by like a thousand strokes when he was 21 years old. I had the Mets versus Philly Sunday night baseball game when Osama bin Laden got killed on uh, Sunday night baseball in 2011. I thought I was watching on TV. And the, it was really eerie, I remember. And then the whole stadium just went fucking nuts. The players had no idea what was going on, but it was really cool. Um, and then uh, the Battle of Kursk. That one, nobody would have known what the fuck that was, though. But it was 2.7 million people, biggest tank war ever uh, between the Soviets and the Germans on the Eastern Front. Um, that's like the entire city of Chicago. Men, women, women and children in a tank war in uh eastern europe so i thought that would be cool to just watch from like a bird's eye view uh obviously 85 bear super bowl jordan's final shot uh disco demolition night dave i'm surprised you no mention to that my, my uh, dad said that uh he turned that ticket down and he's pissed yeah i was i mean that's historic uh malice at the palace that would have been fucking interesting yeah that's uh, a good i have db cooper's plane i'd like to see what that fucker actually looked like you know, see where, you know, if I got a visual out of the window to see where he, I, I feel like I could have maybe X marked the spot, find the, found that fucker. And then I had Titanic. I don't know how I would have worked that where I wouldn't have died in it, but uh, I would have just liked to see the ship and, you know, to see everything that happened on the Titanic. Be rich. You would have survived. The rich guy yeah. slipped the uh, dude a couple hundred thousand or, you know, kidnapped a little orphan girl. And yeah. said, hey, you're, she's all you got or you're all she's got. 
Yeah, most of the – actually, most of the really wealthy guys still died anyways. Um, but the Titanic certainly would have been great to walk around at and, and appreciate the beauty and the majesty. Interesting thing about the Titanic, most of the people that were on that ship were, like, huge players in society. So just oh. imagine if, like, the top, you know, journalists, the top athletes, the top business people, the top mm-hmm. – like, all the famous people in the world, they just imagine just, like, a huge number of them tomorrow morning died. Uh, on that note, my only honorable mention was U.S. history, Battle of Midway. The Pacific yeah. Theater is absolute fucking chaos. The Japanese were ferocious. Then one day comes, and within the, in the matter of 10 minutes, the United States sank three of the Japanese four aircraft carriers. The next day, they put the fourth one down, what seemed like something would take 10 years to slug through and get your ass kicked by the Japanese. When the, in a matter of minutes. One go. last one, Ed. I, I almost went with this, my uh, boxing pick, Tyson Douglas in Japan. That would have been a fucking unreal. One of the biggest, probably the, after the miracle, fucking probably the second biggest sports upset ever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That That's a great one. Um, was he like two hundred to one, right? Or nah, like he was like forty to one. But That's if true. you had if you had Busta, you would have made some serious cabbage. Actually, Busta might have been forty to one. But Tyson was a huge fucking favorite. Nobody thought he was losing that night. There was another tomato can lined up for him, and didn't happen. Big dog. Um, Rear Ed, thanks, man. This was hey, uh, thank was- you, boys. I've been waiting a long time for this. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Uh, Hopefully I'll be back out there soon. I, I miss Chicago. I miss hanging out with you guys. I, I never even got my Italian beef last time I was out there. So we still got to line that bad boy up. Yeah, we got to get you guys out here soon. That was a fun time. Um, but yeah, everybody, that's it for today's draft. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. And we'll see you all next Monday for next week's Snake Draft. And, if, and I'll take the heat for this being late because I had a, a chicklets business call today. So you can give me shit for it. <laughs> no worries. All right, we'll see you, everybody.